Hey, what's up guys? This is Norman3000. So after the disappointing fake Nokia 2720 flip and the KaiOS's intrusive full-screen ad experience, I decided to buy a non-KaiOS Blackview phone. This combines the flippy form factor of the fake Nokia 2720 flip and the build quality and signature look of the Blackview minus the KaiOS. How has the experience with the Blackview N2000 been? Is this a good damn phone? Would I recommend this? Let's find out! First up is the unboxing. You have your phone here, the manual, the charging cable, charger, and the charging stand. Blackview really does go an extra mile for included accessories. Sadly, the charging stand is only compatible with the N2000. This would have honestly been great if it was compatible with the N1000 too. Unlike the N1000 where you feel that this is a good rugged phone, the N2000 doesn't feel as well built or as sturdy. I understand that this is a flip phone, but it honestly feels very cheap. It is covered in plastic that feels very frail and this honestly feels like it would break if it falls to the ground. So let's take a tour around the device. When closed, we have a secondary screen here. This is actually useful for quick glances. It shows the signal reception, the battery, the time, the playing media if it's either MP3 or the FM radio, and the day to day. This is just nitpicking, but I did wish the date was shown here as well. So at the back you have a speaker here, which is average at best. This looks big, but it can't really get that loud. So on one side you have your 3.5mm jack here, and your Type-C USB port. This placement is actually okay for me. It is very accessible and accept both slow and fast chargers and power delivery. On the other side you have your volume rockers and an SOS button. And at the bottom, you have your charging pins for the stand. Opening the device, you have your screen here, which is relatively big. And unlike the N1000, which has a lot of things going on, this is straight to the point. For the buttons, you have your arrow keys here and an enter in the middle. You have a menu and a back key. You have a shortcut here that functions for the FM radio on the home screen. So if you're not on the home screen, this is not gonna work. You also have another back button here an accept and reject call button. You have your T9 keypad here with big letters which can surely help with accessibility for those with eyesight problems. So let's do a quick typing test here. The buttons are not as responsive or as great as the Blackview N1000. But this is fine. So similar to the fake Nokia 2720 and the Blackview N1000, let's go to the app list again, and I will ramble on about them later. So we have the call logs here, contacts, message, images, internet, camera, FM radio, video, clock, music, settings, my files, and others. The others consist of word clock, clock, unit conversion, calculator, calendar, torch, its service counter, and a voice recorder. So let me ramble on about some of these apps. So the first one is the contacts. While thankfully it can import PCF files, for some reason it removes the space between the last name and the first name, giving you a messy contact list. So for example, for this one, this is Abiera AutoVision. There should be a space between Abiera and AutoVision. Another thing I noticed here is the searching seems to be using fuzzy logic where it find matches anywhere in the contact name. For a quick example here, when I want to search for Jello, G E L, so it searches for all of these entries. As you can see here, Jello San Jose. So between Jello and San Jose, there's no space, but on San Jose there is a space because this one is on the surname and this one is the first name and the last name. I don't particularly mind the fuzzy logic or the lack of space between the first and the last name, but it might be annoying for someone with OCD. Next would be the internet. It is important to note that this device can only connect through data. There is no Wi-Fi option here. And the only connectivity you can achieve to the internet 
is through the built-in internet browser. Note that there are no messaging apps here. You can of course log into social media sites, but this is very very painful to use. For the camera, this is just terrible. Even on a tripod, images captured always look blurry. This is essentially a useless camera. So for samples, here you go. So I'm just going to show you, I'm going to do a quick snap here. Let me take a picture of my Anbernic. So as you can see, it's blurry. Where it lacks in camera, it makes up for in FM radio. While the camera and FM radio aren't really one-to-one, -one, for a dumb phone, I honestly prefer this FM radio. Why? This does not need a headset to work. It works as it is. So when you open the FM radio, it's going to scan and it's going to be okay. So let's play here, but I'm going to shuffle through the music stations because I don't want to get copyright strikes. Your music player here is essentially the same with the fake Nokia 2720 and the N1000 where the FLAC files don't play as they are not supported. MP3 playback is thankfully okay. Thankfully, it has decent Bluetooth connectivity that doesn't cut music every now and then. So here's a quick sample of the sound quality of the N2000. So this is another nitpick, but I did wish we have an option here to switch the capability of the volume rocker to be next or previous when the device is closed. Yes, you can control the music using your Bluetooth headset, but I still would have wanted this feature. For the settings, it is very user-friendly, but I do want to point out that this phone is missing one key accessibility perk, and that is the bigger fonts. If one of the target demographic for the N2000 are older people, surely a bigger font should have been an available option. For the N1000, as we can see here, under accessibility, we have the option to enlarge text or make it smaller. I'm not sure why this was not available on the N2000. So one pertinent feature of the N2000 is the SOS. You set an SOS message and a number list, and long pressing the SOS message sends the SOS to the numbers. So for a quick example, let's press on the SOS here. And it's going to call my own SIM and I'm just going to hang up and in a little bit it's going to say that the message has been sent successfully. Sent successfully. So one thing the N2000 lacks would be games. This isn't really a deal breaker but I honestly would have preferred a solitaire or a snake or a breakout. Even just one would have been fine. For the battery life, if you enable 4G multimode under network type, the standby time isn't great, often dying within two days of light use. This may be due to the fact that it's always connected to 4G even if it's not doing anything. However, if you do stick to 2G, this can last you for a very long time. Light usage drops the battery to about one bar per day. I would like to disclose that these observations are not scientific as I really can't do battery tests on this and these are just based on my estimates. Essentially, if 4G is enabled, Standby time is quick and it dies within 2 days of light use. On light use and 2G, it can last you about 5 days. Charging is another thing to note as this charges very slowly. Regardless of what charger you use, it typically charges within 2 to 2.5 hours. It is very slow. So how has the experience actually been? Honestly, it was okay. When we do errands like going to the wet market, we use the N1000 and N2000. 
the typing experience is okay, but it's not as smooth as the one on the N1000. But honestly, this is fine. On idle wait times like commuting, riding on the bus or a train, I wish the N2000 has games. Sure, it can play FM radio without the headset or play MP3s to pass the time, but games are just completely different. I guess the lack of games is by design. There is nothing here to distract you. The Blackview N2000 is literally just to make phone calls and send some texts. I can't even get myself to use the internet app as it is slow and unintuitive. Browsing anything here is not really worth the hassle. So where does that leave us with the Blackview N2000? Let's do a quick pros and cons here. So for the pros, we have great battery, Type-C connectivity, a useful second screen, no bloat, no ad, a no-nonsense phone. And this is entirely subjective, but I think this is a good price for about 2,300 pesos or about $40. So for the cons, the build is cheap especially for the price, there is no option for bigger fonts, the camera is terrible, and the charge times is very slow. So before you get angry, I am fully aware that almost all of these cons are essentially nitpicks. And it's because they are. At about 2,350 pesos or $40, this is relatively expensive for a dumb phone, especially with its frail build quality. But honestly, that's basically it. The use case for this phone, as I said earlier, is to let you make calls and text, and it does those things well. It's a lean gadget that does what it's supposed to do without distracting you with thousand notifications or trying to hook you to use it over and over. Essentially, once a call or text is sent, close the phone and wait for the response. If you want a dumb phone, there are tons of options to consider out there, but all seem to have their compromise. For brand new options, there's the Nokia 105 4G. This is essentially half the price, but this is micro USB. We can also opt for older dumb phones from 20 years ago, but those would have come from 20 years ago. I think the Blackview N2000s offer a unique experience in 2024, where it keeps you connected via phone calls and text and without any distraction, with some modern creature comforts here and there. All in a nostalgic flip phone factor. And for me, I think that this is well worth the 2,350 pesos or about $40. Thank you so much for watching guys. Consider like, sharing, and subscribing if you found this useful. This has been Norman3000. See you soon and stay connected.